All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So I got a chance to attend the R&B Experience concert here in DC. Now, mind you, this is a series of shows that's been taking place all around the country. And I'm guessing this is kind of like the second leg because they had some shows back in, I want to say December, you know, they went to like Atlanta and a few other places. But this is a show that consists of H-Town, 112, Silk, Tamar Braxton, Tevin Campbell, Escape, and Monica. And I think there's been some different variations of the lineup with some people added or some people taken off in different cities. But they came to D.C. tonight. So I got a chance to go. Me and one of my good friends randomly hit them up like, hey, we're going. Let's go. They were down. We had this thing mapped out. We were excited all week. Like, we stopped at my place pregame because, look, drinks at the marinas be too much. Right? We, I was, we were just at a Wizards game last week or two weeks ago. It was $36 for a drink. That's Lord, all right, just start drinking water from now on. What? God. But anyway, so got to the show, and like I said, it was a really, really great time. I enjoyed pretty much all of the acts that were there. If I had any critiques, it's the same kind of critique I normally have for a lot of concerts. One, the main thing, of course, the sound. The sound was kind of up and down. And to be fair, when you have a show with so many different acts and you have different bands and different DJs and everybody has different things that are custom made for that specific act, even with the microphones, if you're a, a thinner voice singer where your voice is not as rich, a lot of times you request that your microphone has extra bass in it so it picks your voice up and it carries through the arena. There's just all these different things that take place. And so, you know, as the different acts were going, sometimes some acts would have really great sound, others would have a sound that's a bit more questionable. Not like them singing, but the actual sound playing through the speaker. So sometimes the bass was way too loud and it's blaring and you can't even make out what the song is. You just gotta feel the vibrations and hope you can recognize the bass riff. And then there's other moments where the sound is really, 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 really rich and maybe a little bit too much treble where it's almost piercing your ears, right? And then there's different times where sometimes, it, especially with people that had more than one member, the mics are not all balanced. Um, and so that was kind of one of the things that kind of sucked a little bit. Even with Escape, um, there was a moment in the very beginning where Candy and Tiny's mics were so loud over Tamika's. And, and mind you, it wasn't like they were like screaming or nothing, but they're trying to do like the blend. But Candy and Tamika were way, like, or Tiny, their voices were, like, way over Tamika's. But they were able to fix it. But, you know, things like that always kind of turn me off a little bit. So I'm always, like, fix the sound because sound makes a huge difference. Um, my other critique would have just been when you have so many people on a lineup, I wish they could find better ways to kind of get the show that smoothly transition between the acts. Like, you shouldn't have people waiting 20 and 30 minutes between each act. I understand you got to move bands and re set up stages and stuff, but, man... The show ran from 7 to pretty much almost midnight. Monica had to end her set early because they ran out of time. I was like, dang, this is a long show. And to be fair, like, or not even be fair, this is almost the same critique I had before. Like, I went to a very similar show in 2017 when Escape went on the, the Great Escape Tour. It was almost the same lineup, too, but it was Escape, Monica, Tamar, but instead of the other folks, um, June's Diary and somebody else was on that ticket. And it was the same thing where there was a lot of time in between the acts. And so that kind of kills the momentum with the crowd. So I know when we got there, mind you, we missed H-Town because we, I think by 7.20, we, we finally got to our seats because the show started at 7. H-Town was already off the stage. And that, that's our fault because we were pre-gaming before we got there. Um, yeah, but it's like you get there at 7 o'clock, everybody's lit and yeah, having a good time. 7 o'clock hits, 8 o'clock hits, you know, 9 o'clock, ah, 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 10 o'clock started hitting, everybody body get tired. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Woo, okay, all right, and it, but look, when it hit 11 o'clock and Monica wasn't out yet, okay, and so yeah, folks, folks started kind of leaving out towards the end just because of whatever reasons, but as far as the actual show, like I said, we missed H-Town, but they sounded great from what I could hear, like we were going through security and stuff, and you could kind of hear, you know, the knock in the boot song in the background, so I, that sounded decent from where we were at. Um, the first act we got to actually be able to see was Silk. One of the members wasn't there, but Silk was still fun. But a lot of the earlier acts in this show only got to do about two or three songs. So I think Silk did three songs. Of course, they did Meeting in My Bedroom. If there was a song I wish they could have done, nobody ever remembers this song. But I used to love the song, It Had to Be You. That was one of my favorite songs back in the day. Um, but they don't ever really add it to the set list that much, I guess. But, you know, Silk was fun. They sounded really great as well, too. So, so really great vocals. And, you know, with H-Town, I'm guessing they were in the same boat as Silk where they had to use the DJ and they didn't get the band. But 
I, like I said, I didn't get to see H Town, but I'm guessing they probably did the same thing Silk did, where you already have a band that goes ahead and records a live version of the song, and then you just keep that audio and you play that in the arena and sing to that. So it still sounds like there's a band there, and it's not just a DJ playing instrumental. So Silk was fun, had a great time. Plus, like I said, by the time we got in there, we were on our high from our pregame. So maybe Silk might not have even been that good, but they were good to us. We were having a great time. Um. After Silk was 112. 112 was a party. Like, 112 has a bunch of fun songs. And I didn't know what to expect because I've never really seen 112 um, live, at least. But, you know, they got to do about four or five songs. So their set was fun. I think my favorite bit out of their set was probably Cupid. Um, sounded really good. And, and even, like, Peaches and Cream and Dance with me were fun as well. So 112 was a fun show. Now... That wasn't all of 112. I, I saw about two members I recognized, and I saw two other folks. I'm like, who are these people? But, you know, they, they blended in well, I guess. You know how it is with groups. Everybody, something's always going down, so it is what it is. That's, that's the name of entertainment. So 112 is kind of cool to see. It's, it brings back that nostalgia of childhood. And, you know, if you were a kid that grew up in the 90s, early 2000s, it's like, this was a, a, a great show to go to, right? Plus, it's always fun to see a show like this in a place like D.C., or Baltimore, or like Atlanta, or like New Orleans, or Houston. Just those audiences where you have that really large cohort of black folks. Because black folks are so much fun to party with. <laughs> like, we concerts get so lit. We be a, we're our own concert before the act even gets on the stage. So that's always a lot of fun. After 112 was Tamar Braxton. Um, Tamar was cool. Um, I'm not the biggest Tamar follower. And I've seen her a few times live, so it was kind of like been there, done that. But she looked really great, I will say. She she looked amazing as far as, um, you know, she's really kept herself physically together. But technically, by the time this video uploads, it will be Sunday. And Sunday is also Tracy Braxton's birthday. And so she had dedicated pretty much her set in um, Love and War to Tracy. So, you know, it hit her while she was performing. And, you know, you get choked up and stuff. It's hard to sing and sound good at the same time when you're crying. That's tough. The only person I've seen really be able to push through a song when they're like crying and, and every note still comes out is it was a Phyllis Hyman. There's a show on YouTube where Phyllis Hyman is singing an old friend and she just learned about one of her friends that died right before the show started and she still pushed through with the show. That, that's one of the few times where I've seen somebody be able to really push through, but it's hard to sing and cry at the same time. But I like Tamar said it was fun. Um, she got to do a few more songs as well. I think she did what? Hot Sugar and Long Way Home and... Um, what's the song she had with Future? You don't know what I'm talking about. Um, what is it? Let me know. I forgot what it's called. He did that. A few other songs. So Tamar's set was fun. Uh, also, this was the first show um, since all of the stuff would escape and, and the sisters and 30,000 and the candy versus Tamar, all that beef and stuff they got. So, you know, I couldn't wait to sit, sit and watch and see if there was anything that was going to be said or anything that was going to be done or if there was going to be somebody that got booted from the show right before it started. But... It seems like all was well, and whatever nonsense they had going, they left it backstage and did not bring it to the stage, so it is appreciated. And so, yeah, Tamar was fun. After Tamar was Tevin Campbell, which for me was a pleasant surprise. So, Tevin, I don't think he gets his just due. You know, I know we all love Can We Talk. That's 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 the brunch anthem, you know. It's the stadium anthem for brunch. They're they going to play Can We Talk somewhere, and everybody sings it to the top of their lungs. But Tevin has a really nice catalog. And so, he opened with Round and Round. That was on his first album. It was also on uh, Graffiti Bridge, that second Prince movie. Third Prince movie. Um, what else did he have? He added, oh, Goodbye. Listen, Goodbye is probably my favorite Tevin Campbell song. I personally prefer Goodbye over Can We Talk. That's just me. Y'all ain't got to fight me. They're both great songs. I think because we hear Can We Talk so much, it's hard to enjoy it as much. It's kind of like when they play Velvet Vote Poison at a party. I'm like, oh. This one, let me go to the bathroom. Y'all let me know what it's over with. Because it's just, at, at this point, we, we play it so much. Or even Candy Rain with So For Real. You know, these songs are great. We love them. But you hear them so much at parties and events. You don't even, it's not even a thing to hear them anymore. But, um, yeah, Tevin did Goodbye. He did Always In My Heart. He did, what, what's that song? Shh. shh. <laughs> he did that song. And, of course, he, he did Can We Talk, which sounded amazing. Now, I will say, Can We Talk goes so hard live. Like, it, that's a great one. Like, you have the entire arena just singing to the top of their lungs. So that was really, really cool. But he, he's in really great voice. I really would like to, um, if, if, if I could say one thing about the show, I probably would have split the show up a bit because I just think they had too many acts 
And when you have so many acts, everybody has to cut their set down. And so I probably would have split the show. Like, you know, put some on one show and put some on the other. Because, listen, Tevin has a catalog. Like, I think back, his first album had, what, eight singles? But, you know, a lot of times he only gets to do, in these events, like three or four. Because um, I, I know, like, man, my cousin used to be obsessed with Tevin when we were little. Um, cause she, she went crazy over that first album. But that first album had, um, it had Round and Round. Tell me what you want me to do, which I wish he would have sang, but it's okay. Because, listen, I know Candy be hyped to do her note on My Little Secret, but when little Tevin used to do that, that high note on um, uh, Tell Me What You Want Me To Do, that was a note there. Alone With You, um, Just Ask Me To, Strawberry Letter, I'm skipping something, One Song, Confused. There's one more song on there um, that's on that first album. But, yeah, like I said, he had a but, and that's just the first album, so... I would like to see Tevin have a more extended show. It, it, he, to me, vocally, he sounded the best out of everybody. Um, I thought he sounded really, really good. And so that was a fun um, set to go through. After Tevin was Escape, right? And so Escape, who pretty much, they're pretty much the reason I bought the tickets. I really enjoy um, Escape. That's, that's a fun group to watch. And so, um, like I said, the, the sound was doing a lot at first. So when they first came out, the sound was kind of messing them up a bit. But I thought they, they sounded really good once the sound was kind of worked out. A lot of fun. Um, Tasha, I hope y'all can work it out because I'm not trying to sound shady or anything like that. But to me personally, it wasn't even noticeable that Tasha wasn't there. The way that Tamika and Tiny were able to kind of carry her parts and just keep it moving, they were still cohesive. The blend was still there. To me, I enjoyed the show. Like It would have been nice to have all four of them there, but even with the three, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I was like, this is actually pretty lit. And like, I think it gives Tamika an opportunity to really show us what she can do because she wasn't really one to lead a lot of the singles. So by her kind of taking on a lot of her sister's parts, you got to really see what it is Tamika can do on stage. And Tamika is amazing. Like, she sounded amazing. I know when I went to the Great Escape show, and I think I did a review of that one too, I really gasped of how great Tasha was because I said Tasha has the stamina and can just pull these notes out of nowhere and just keep going and going and going and going and going all night and not get tired. But Tamika could do the same thing. And even Tiny was kind of carrying a lot of the songs. Like, to me... I was like, okay, like I have a, a, a definitely a newfound respect for them vocally. Um, and it's so funny because you know when you go to a show, everything sounds so great when you're there. And then when you go back and play them clips on your phone, you're like, wait a minute, this isn't, I don't remember it sounding like this. Um, yeah, it, it, they were good. Candy cracked me up though. Like, listen, people be laughing at me, but I really like Candy a lot for some reason. I don't know what it is. Something about Candy just pulls me in all the time. My friend was like, I, I know you're going to act stupid when Candy come out. I'm like, yes, I am. And so... Uh, but no, look, Candy, I ain't gonna lie, Candy, Candy hit one of them notes that it sounded great when I was there, and when I heard it back in my phone, I was like, ooh, I don't remember it sounding like that, but it's okay, I still thought she sounded really good on, on everything else, um, and like, yeah, y'all give Candy a hard time, Candy's alright with me, like, like I said, she carries the bottom in the group, she, she helps to round out that harmony they got, but Escape was a lot of fun, I wish they could have done more songs, but again, having such a, a, a large you know, list of, of performers. They did, I want to say maybe six or seven songs. And the ones they did were really good, of course. They did what? Who Can I Run To, My Little Secret, Understanding, Just Kicking It, Do You Want To, Softest Place, Tiny Killed That Crap on Softest Place on Earth. She sounded really good on that. There was like one other song they did, one or two more songs. I Got Love, and there's something else I'm skipping, but, you know, to each his own. They um, feel so good. There might have been one more song. But, yeah, they had a really fun show. Um, that they did, you know, they got the dancers, they pulled out the umbrellas and all that kind of stuff and, you know, got the costumes and the choreography. They were a lot of fun. I hope them and SWV can work it out as well. Like, I need everybody to work out their drama because we ain't getting no younger. So all y'all just beefing this drama, <laughs> make, make, do what y'all need to do. Now, I, I don't think the burden is on Escape to, to fix stuff with Tasha. I think Tasha got a, the burden on her right now, but hopefully everything can work out. It would be nice to see the four of them back together and it would have been nice if that SWV and Escape tour could have happened. Because like I said, TLC and En Vogue are touring together and having a great time. So I'm going to need you two to get it together. But yeah, that escape was a lot of fun. And then Monica was the next act. And like I said, this was my beef with the show. After the first two or three acts, once they got through um, H-Town, Silk, and 112, like those three, when they went and got off, they the next act would be on in like five or six minutes. Cool. You know, they had a host, keep everybody entertained, do the DJ thing. Cool. Once we started getting to the acts that have had live bands, then you had to keep waiting and waiting and then got to reset up screens and LED lights and all this other stuff. And you just waiting and waiting and waiting. 
I think we waited. We had to wait at least 35 minutes for Monica. So we already had the actual DJ for the tour that, you know, he did his set, told his jokes, did some stuff. And whoever that host guy was, he was, he was all right with me. He was kind of funny. And so right after that, the you know, they got Monica's set going and all the background singers because, you know, Monica knows how to really make sure she brings in presentation. She's all about, you know, the, w what you're getting in addition to the vocals. And so I'm thinking, all right, here she comes because they got the, the fog. And then what happens? Monica's DJ does a set for 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, this. <sighs> all right, y'all, it's, it's, it's 10.58. <laughs> like, it's getting late. <laughs> and so, um, so then Monica finally comes out. And look, Monica actually sounds really good. I think she sounded better tonight than she did when I saw her in 2017. I think in 2017, you know, sometimes when you do a lot of touring, your voice just gets kind of tired. When I saw her at the Escape show, she just seemed a little tired to me vocally in 2017. The Monica I saw tonight, her voice just sounds a lot richer and healthier, like she's been able to like get well rested and kind of recover and rejuvenate, so she sounded amazing. My only beef though, like I said, because the show had ran so long, she pretty much had to cut her set short. And then it didn't help. Somebody wanted to start fighting during the show, so she had to stop a song. And I was so mad because she was just about to sing Why I Love You So Much. She was just about to, and she went cut, cut, cut. Wait a minute. I was like, dang. So some, some girl on my same side that was ready to fight about something. And so once they got that cleared up, she just jumped in the so go on. I'm like, fine. But it was kind of funny because she, de she dedicated the song to, to the girl. But again, because the show ran over, she pretty much was like, sorry, guys. You know, I'm out of time. He's saying I got to get off the stage. So Monica got to do maybe eight songs. You know, she got to do all the singles from Miss Thing, minus why I love you so much because somebody wants to start throwing hands. Um, she got to do For You, I Will. She got to do Angel of Mine. She got to do So Gone. She could have kept Sideline Ho. I would have traded Sideline Ho for um, not the first night, to be honest. Um, Love All Over Me. What else did she do? There's like another song or two in that mix somewhere I forgot about. But, you know, Monica, was still, she was still on there long enough where you felt like you got enough. But it would have been nice for her to be up, up just a tad bit longer. But, you know, that was pretty much the show. Overall, like I said... That's a show you go to with some friends and just have a good time. You know, it was a fun show. Lots of, of laughs and memories. The people I was sitting around were pretty cool. You know, everybody was kind of, you know, good, good energy around me. It was, I was sitting next to this guy that had like an all Gucci short set on. I was like, he, he must be from Houston. But um, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and that is not a dig at Houston, so don't y'all come on here trying to fight me. I'm just saying, I remember everybody down back in the day used to wear the short sets from that area when, when I was in like college. But um yeah, good show. I just wish they could have fixed the sound, and I just wish there wasn't so much time in between the sets. That, that That's what kind of kills it. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, um, I don't know what, what to do as far as the transition, because I understand you got to set the stage up and, and get the sound in the band right. And that was my thing. Y'all took all this time setting up everything, and the sound still messed up. So who's doing what in the back? I got questions. Anyway. If you were in D.C. and you got to go to the show or you were from Baltimore and drove down, like, hey, tell me in the comments what you thought of the show. Like I said, I enjoyed every act. If I had to rank my favorite acts out of everything, for me, it was Escape was my number one. Tevin was my number two. Uh, Monica was my number three. And Monica's only my number three because I've seen Monica many, 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 many times. So at this point, it's not even a surprise to see her. So now at this point, when I see Monica, I'm just comparing the different times that I've seen her. You know, but like I said, everybody was really good. Everybody was in good voice. A lot of fun, good energy. I love the crowd. I love partying with black folks because we're lit. And um, yeah, anyway, Sherry Two Cents, I'm out. Subscribe. Baby, get the keys and go. I got to the stars on your face.